Zdravim Shetkich. Today I'm going to be telling you about four minor things to get used to when living in Slovakia as an American. So these four things are something that I've thought about recently. And uh, well, the first one, it kind of comes up every few nights for me. Uh, the first one is that here in Slovakia, there are not too many places at all, like not too many stores, restaurants or whatever that are uh, open either 24 hours or open till late night, like maybe like two in the morning or something like that. Now, um, in the United States, that's something uh, that you can come across like fairly frequently. I mean, it depends on where you live, but in my hometown of Santa Rosa, there were at least a couple of supermarkets in the city that are open 24 hours or at the very least till like two or three in the morning. And so you could do your shopping essentially in the middle of the night or um, if you didn't want to go grocery shopping, but you just wanted to get some kind of bite to eat um, through a drive through uh, then there were a few fast food places that you could go to that were 24 hours. Now that's something that uh, so far I've noticed is not really a thing here in Slovakia. Um, if you check on Google Maps and you know type in grocery store or food or something like that uh, and it's super late at night, um, nothing's going to be open because well a lot of places just um, aren't 24 hours here and in most of the districts in Bratislava a lot of the places like a lot of restaurants, grocery stores will close around like 8, 9 or 10. The latest are open till like 10 oftentimes. Sometimes you might find a place that's open till 11, but there's never, yeah, at least in my experience, I haven't seen any place that is open till maybe like 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. or 24 hours. So that's something that you may have to get used to if you're a night owl and if you decide to move to Slovakia or if you're just coming here uh, for a few days or something like that. And if you're kind of a night owl, then we'll be prepared for most of the places to be closed at night. One other quick thing that I forgot to mention earlier regarding restaurants is that you'll notice a lot of restaurants in Slovakia are closed on the weekends. Now, I'm not specifically talking about ones in the downtown area of Bratislava, but I'm talking about uh, kind of on the outskirts of Bratislava and in most of the rest of the country. Maybe about half the restaurants won't be open on weekends. And to me, that's a little strange because um, uh, in America, at least Fridays, Saturdays and Sundays are typically the busiest days for restaurants. So they're almost always open on those days. I think it's it's popular for, you know, uh, people in America, like friends or family or whatever, to want to go out to a restaurant on maybe a Saturday evening or a Sunday morning, like maybe go to a diner or something like that for a Sunday morning. So if you're coming here and you're American, just keep in mind uh, that not all of the restaurants or places to get food are going to be open on the weekends. So be aware of that. The second minor thing to get used to is that in Slovakia, there is a lack of public laundromats. Now, that might not even be such a big deal uh, for a lot of people in the States because you know um, a lot of people in the states already have a, a washer and a dryer inside of their home or inside of their apartment um, but in Slovakia there doesn't seem to be any at all at least like not in Bratislava so um, uh, that's something that some people would do in the states is if you do not have a washer and dryer in your home somewhere then you can go to a public laundromat and uh, we'll bring your dirty laundry there and get it all cleaned and dried up and um, then take things take those things uh, with you back home. Now uh, something that I have noticed is that in Slovakia um, uh, just about I mean basically every uh, apartment or every home there is at least a washer but it's not as common for there to be dryers so oftentimes you'll see people uh, hanging their clothes outside uh, if they've got like a little yard like out in the yard or out in the balcony or maybe just somewhere inside their home so it's less common to have a dryer here I think um, but most basically all places uh, all homes have washers so hence there's not really a need for public laundromats here in Slovakia. The third thing to get used to when living in Slovakia is well Obviously, they're using the metric system here because most of the rest of the world, other than the states and I think like one other country, uh, use the metric system. And the United States uses the imperial system. Now, I don't think this is the biggest thing uh, to get used to. I mean, uh, the metric system is still used to a small degree uh, in the United States. Measurement systems uh, most often comes up um, in the context of cooking. Like if you're trying to follow some recipe, 
and it's saying, oh, use this much uh, salt or sugar or this much of this ingredient or whatever it might be, uh, you're most gonna notice uh, the change there. And personally, I think, um, you know, for casual use, I think uh, the Imperial system uh, is easier to use in the context of cooking, uh, but it might also come up if you're trying to um, be able to calculate or tell the distance, like how far uh, one city is to another or how far you'll be going. Uh, since here, obviously, they're using kilometers and not miles, so that might be a minor thing to get used to if you're an American. Then, the fourth and final thing that you might have to get used to if you're an American coming to Slovakia is, well, Notice that some places or in certain situations there might be a little extra fee that you may have to pay, like an unexpected little fee. Um, the two best examples that I can uh, think of are uh, when you go to a public restroom, uh, be prepared to have some coins with you, some Euro coins, because, uh, well, you very likely will have to pay to use the restroom. Um, I can definitely say that if you are in a train station, you will have to pay to use uh, the bathroom, it might cost under a euro, uh, sometimes it's one euro or a tiny bit more. Um, it's never as too expensive, but uh, in America, you don't have to pay to use um, public restrooms. So it's kind of, um, you know, if, if you're not aware of that coming here or to like an EU nation, then uh, that might catch you off guard. And especially if you're the type of person that doesn't really use cash, if you just use your card or some other contactless payment, well, just be prepared to have to pay for a public restroom. Another kind of unexpected thing is if you're going to a restaurant and if you're ordering your food and you don't want any kind of special drink, you just want like simple plain, you know, tap water, like nothing bottled, um, it doesn't seem like uh, they will give you that water for free here. It seems like uh, they will only sell you a bottled water. So um, I'm sure if you really insist, uh, you can probably get uh, tap water at some places, but it's not really something that's like normally done here. And uh, for the Slovaks watching um, or other Europeans um, in America, if you go to like a restaurant or if you're like in like a gas station or some place that might uh, have like a water dispenser, you usually can ask for a cup of water and they most of the time will give it to you for free. So that's something that, uh, you know, you can usually ask for in America and you'll just get the water for free. So, well, that's gonna about wrap up today's video. If you found the video interesting or enjoyed it, then uh, please feel free to subscribe to the channel, uh, leave a like, definitely leave a comment down below on uh, your thoughts on this video. And uh, if you feel so inclined, uh, I also have affiliate links down in the description of this video that you can use. It's, uh, it's a good way to uh, support the channel and it's at no extra cost to you. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video and have a great day. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.